This video is proudly sponsored by Newtype. Tools, accessories, model kits, these guys have it. Hop over to NewtypeHQ.com and use the link below to help this channel out for future builds. The year was 2001. At that time, I just wrapped up high school and started transitioning into going to college, and in that time, I needed to get a job. And the only job that was readily available was working at my local Jack in a Box. But in that time, I experienced my first dip into the world of collecting video games. But little did I knew that the one game that would change my perspective of first person shooters would be none other than Halo Combat Evolve. So after much success of building the Samus Aran power suit for Metroid, I thought it was a really good opportunity to try to tackle another franchise that I absolutely love and is near dear to my heart, and that is going to be Halo. Now, to make this Halo Master Chief Spartan 1-1 suit, we're not going to be focusing on just one style. I'm going to be taking a hodgepodge of what I've seen from the old versus the new, and then try to create my own unique design by taking all these mobile suits and incorporate it into one unique build. So to make this step works, I need to do a lot, and I mean a lot of research on what kits will work to make this look really good but first we need to talk about color schemes so number one dark green not gonna work that worked for halo 4 mid dark green worked for halo 5 now we have a choice between mid light green and very lime green lime green is more focused on the original halo we're gonna focus our attention on the green spectrum of halo infinite which i think it worked very well now for the next step this is gonna be a little difficult because i need a specific tool to make this project work so i swung on over to my local hardware store to pick up a particular dremel now the dremel i need is gonna be the reinforcement disc that is specifically designed to cut through plastic and actual wood pieces. But since the disc is thin enough to work with particular plastic runners for Gundam model kits, it's gonna get the job done. Now we need to talk about the three basic rules to make this project work. Number one, no 3D printed pieces. Number two, dynamic poses and three modifications. I'm gonna be a little relaxed on number one because there are two essential 3D pieces that I need to get printed out to make it feel like an authentic Halo kit bash. And speaking of authenticity, we need to talk about how to build the iconic Spartan 117 helmet. Now, my original intention was to take each individual individual runners from these particular mobile suits and build up one unique Master Chief face, but since the 1100 scale RGM 79C already has all the work done for the face, I figure it was kind of pointless. On top of that, this particular kit is very expensive. Even if it's like an old Master Chief, it's very difficult to find right now. So I ended up just working what I had to work with to make this project work. Now, the one thing I was a little concerned was the visor. The visor is a tad too small. When you look at the promotion work for Master Chief, it's pretty big. So I'm gonna have to work with that limitations there while at the same time try to build around it to make it look really cool. Now for the camera module, I was originally intending to remove it, but I ended up thinking to myself, you know what, just keep it there. It helps build character. And here's a good side comparison on what I was gonna work with between the two heads. The one on the right actually has a great deal of cavity space and just enough room to pull off some great dynamic looks from the Master Chief. But I feel the one on the left just really captures the look of Master Chief just beautifully. If circumstances were different, I would still would have followed through on just taking these particular runners and then combined it into one. But since this kit is very expensive, it's very difficult to find right now, I figured the best course of action was just to go with the mint chip blue to really pull off the Master Chief uh, design. There are some areas I'm gonna need to modify to make it look like Chief, but overall, like the piping work is already done and that creates less of a headache and less of an issue. Especially when it comes to the visor. Again, it is a bit small, but with the right kind of color sheen to it with the clear orange, orange and a metallic gold, it'll still pull off the effect. Now we need to talk about other runners and we're going to be using the mobile gin. Now I know there's a handful of you dudes and dudes that wanted me to build this, I'm sorry, but this thing just screams Master Chief. It has all the features of Master Chief's forearms, his torso, and also key areas around the neck area and the waist. The inner frame itself isn't anything too crazy to really brag about. It's very constricted around the waistline, moving left and right, and trying to do a front and back crunch is, it's impossible. So I'm gonna end up working what I have to work with to still pull off the look of Master Chief. There are some runners on here that I'm gonna leave out that's gonna create less of an issue, but right now it's really important that I have the abdomen, the torso, the forearms to really pull off the look that I wanna pull off for Spartan 117. As you can see here, the waist distribution of moving left to right is still constricted when all the runners are implemented onto it. But once you start to piece one runner over another and then fully assemble it, you start to really see the blueprints of a Master Chief model kit. If not a Master Chief, then definitely a Robocop in my opinion. But 
I'm a little puzzled about this particular mobile suit because it came out of nowhere. I had no idea this was going to come out anytime soon this month, so I'm actually kind of happy that it fell around the time when it did. Now for areas I'm going to be using a drum to hollow out, I'm going to be hollowing out like a square shape in back of the head, which is going to be the area that's going to be housing the AI chip for Cortana. Um, but I'm not going to put a chip back there, but it's just going to give like the emphasis that there is like an AI component where you're going to put Cortana in there. I'm going to use a 1x32 Dremel on both cheeks of Master Chief's helmet so that way I can put in two Pico LED lights to create that light effect around the helmet. And then that's pretty much it. I'm probably going to put like maybe like one LED in back of the head for like just for effects. It's not really necessary, but it's cool to add that little attention to detail to make areas pop out and look really dynamic. Now, I did draw a great deal of inspiration from the Forward Onto Dawn Halo movie that came out many years ago because that suit implemented a lot of LEDs in specific key areas. I wanted to just keep it focused around the helmet because it'll create less wiring crowding. And on top of that, I really want to really encapsulate that this is a giant mobile suit mecha Master Chief instead of someone in a suit. So that's where my inspiration is coming from to build this unique style of model kit. So other than that, kick back and relax and enjoy the build.
So, the torso is roughly 95% done. Now I need to tackle my attention on the forearms and the shoulder blades. Now, as you can see here, the forearms are beautifully sculpted from the GN mobile suit, but my biggest challenge is going to be placing a shoulder blade armor piece on top of the shoulder blade. Now, I'm going to be using areas from the toe section of the mobile suit to really show what it would really look like if I work with it, but it's a little too bulky, a little too loud. I wanted something a little bit more low profile, so I thought about using the particular knee of the GN suit and eh, it still doesn't work. So I'm gonna have to play around with the idea with other model kits that I have from my catalog to make it work. Now for the actual wrist sections, I'm gonna be drilling four holes on top of the wrist section to make it look authentic, how you would see Master Chief, while at the same time trying to retain the look of it. Now when I'm drilling holes into this area, they can't be too deep, then they can't be too shallow. So I gotta be very careful. Now that the head is now done and completed, it's now time to do the next part that's going to be absolutely challenging, and that is going to be the waist section. Now, it would make sense to use the connectors from the torso and then the waist section from the actual GN mobile suit, but here's the thing. It's a little too bulky, and it's a little too wide, and that can be problematic, and I don't want to use the legs from the GN mobile suit because I want to have a nice streamlined, uh, slim look to the Master Chief mobile suit. So I got the idea of using the actual Buster Master Grade suit waist section. Uh, but the, there are some challenges with, with this particular waist section and that is pretty much the peg system that sits at the bottom. Now this peg system is designed for the Buster Gundam. The one that is designed for the Jin is designed for the Jin. So I'm gonna take the Jin's peg 
um, waste section and then glue it onto the buster waste system so that way it can interconnect to one another. Um, there is going to be some slight crowding, but if you do the measurements just right and you do some custom cutting, it should be able to pull off the effect just beautifully. But I have to stress this part very, very carefully that if you do it wrong and if it's not properly centered, it's going to be very awkward. So as you can see here, I'm paying very close attention to how I'm going to center it inside this main cavity area. Then once I got the measurements just right, I'm going to be snipping off the edges of both of these little areas. Now what I'm basically doing, I'm not going to snip it too far, I'm going to snip it off just enough where I have just enough real estate there to glue it into place. If I do this correctly, it shouldn't have any problems in the future when I come to doing dynamic poses or having it put on my personal display. Alright, so now that part's done, it's now time to decide on what art direction I want to go for the waist section. So, I'm going to go with the dual Gundam art direction for the waist section because I think it would look just fine. But later on in the video, you're going to notice that I switched with the Buster Gundam waist section because it actually just works with the overall art direction I want to go for the mobile suit. Now, back to the head, it definitely has the iconic look of the baseball-like visor you would see from Master Chief, but I want to make him a pop-out just enough. Luckily for me, I had this particular model kit lying around because it was given to me as a gift, so I figured I might as well use some section of the runners to really pull off the look that I want. It's not going to be too direct, but I just want to pull off the look to just really show that it looks like the Master Chief. So these little peg sections, I'm going to use them for the front part of the head, but since they are in a weird looking shape, I'm going to have to do some modifications and create like a slope inside where they will sit just underneath the ridge around the visor so that way I can glue them into place. If I do it just right, it should pull off the effect beautifully, but it's going to take some trial and error to get the way how I want it to look. I don't want it to be too long and I don't want it to be too far apart.
So now we reached the part of the video where I was talking about the waist section. As you can see here, I'm not liking the dual Gundam waist section at all. It just, these little side little skirts are just way, way too long and the front crotch, oof. It's a little too flat for my taste. <laughs> uh, I wanted to be a little bit more bulkier, definitely give it like a, a nice tank look to it. So this is where the Buster Gundam comes into play because this is my original design on working with the legs. I didn't really focus too much on the skirt. Like I just wanted the legs to be the way how I wanted because it creates a nice little militaristic look. But if you look at the side skirts and compare it over to Chief, they just work just beautifully. So I'm gonna work with that along with the legs. And then comes the biggest challenge for this particular kit and that is going to to be the feet. I got nothing against the Buster Gundam's feet, but they're just a tad too long and there isn't a great range of articulation around the toe section. And at the same time, they're not blocking up. I need something that definitely encapsulates the Chief's art direction to make it look the way how I want it. On top of that, I didn't want to spend unnecessary money to really pull this model kit off the way how I envisioned it, but fortunate enough for me, I actually had a spare model kit in my closet that I was planning on building, but fortunately enough for me, we're gonna be getting another revisit of this kit towards the end of the year. And that, my dudes and dudes, it's going to be the Master Grade Exia. This kit is an excellent, excellent candidate for the feet section because they're not too slim, they're not too blocky, they just have the right kind of look and feel to make it look like Master Chief. But what makes this fighting even much more exciting is I'm going to get a great range of dynamic poses around the ankle section. So this is just a blessing in disguise. Although I did have some concerning errors around the connection part of the cab to the leg. There's this weird little plastic peg that kind of sticks out at the very end. So I'm going to use an actual Dremel blade to cut that out and then sand it down. Once that's out of the way, shouldn't have any problems after that. So here's a good example of references for you guys. So here's the actual foot, fully painted, fully weathered. You know, it looks just fine the way it is. And then when you connect it, it looks just fine, but it just doesn't keep true to the form of the art direction I wanted to pull up for Master Chief. So I'm gonna take that foot out and then construct the XCF foot to replace that. Not only this is gonna get an extra height, but at the same time, it's gonna give it a little bit more range of flexibility when I put it in dynamic poses.
Alright, so we have finally reached the part of this kit bass that I'm actually super excited to build and that is going to be the assault rifle. Now I originally was going to include the side arms for Master Chief, you know, the pistols um, that he uses in the game, but after getting much thought, I didn't want to use the Master Grade Testament's pistols. They're, they're kind of like designed for that particular mobile suit and they just don't work for Chief. So I figured the best course of action is to build an assault rifle from the ground up using remaining pieces from the Jin's assault rifle and the GN's assault rifle attachments. And the wonderful thing about these attachments, they are absolutely accurate to the assault rifle from Halo Infinite. So that's where I'm going to draw a lot of my influences on that design aspect instead of the original or the one from Halo 4 and 5. I like that overall design aesthetic. Now, my original plan for a secondary side arm, which was going to be the Covenant Sword Blade, I end up just scrapping that idea all together because I want to use these runners for other future projects. And at the same time, it's always good to hold on to these other runners for other future kit bashes. So that's the reason why I didn't go too overzealous on that idea. All right, so now that I got the necessary pieces to assemble the assault rifle, I now need to do some slight modifications. For one, I need to get rid of this little U section here so that way I can make room for other additional runners. Other than that, it's pretty much smooth sailing from here and all I need to do is just glue things into place. So as I was halfway through constructing this model kit, I had the bright idea like what if I can add a magnet to the assault rifle and then a section in back of the backpack to add a nice magnetic connection like how you would see in the video game. So lucky for me I had some spare magnets lying around and that way I can actually connect one magnet to the base of the actual assault rifle and then there will be actually a magnet in back of the mobile suit backpack area to keep it into place.
I don't know how, but I did it. <laughs> it literally took me three and a half weeks to construct my ideal vision on how I would see a Master Chief in like in a Gundam universe. Um, there are some areas that I felt that I took a lot of shortcuts in. There are some things I wish I could have constructed to keep it in, in truth to the lore of Halo Universe, but the thing is when I do kit bashes, I'm already in the zone of trying to create something that is in my head. You know, adding little doodads here and there can make it cool, but at the same time, it can be a big distraction. And there were dozens of times where I got distracted on like the look of the Master Chief. You know, the first thing that really comes on top of my head is the shoulders and the sidearms. You know, the shoulders were like a big issue, but the sidearms were like the one part I really wanted to make it look really cool because, you know, that's part of Master Chief's armaments. But like I said before, the design of them just didn't work. It didn't really stay into flow what I wanted for an art direction. It just hurt it overall. Other areas I really wanted to implement LEDs, which I thought would look really cool on paper, just didn't work at all. My original plan was to put an LED light inside the head, and I thought that would look really cool, but it kind of defeats the actual look of what Master Chief is all about. If this was a different variation of it, or I was following through with another art direction of Master Chief, then it probably would have worked. But doing a kid bash is fun. You get left with all these little pieces of little doodads. You have to figure out what goes where. Hell, I even had like a failed project I did for Metroid Prime a couple weeks back and it didn't work out, but I still keep it there as a reminder on what I need to get better at. Part management, part separation, and etc. and etc. Even when it came down to just trying to construct a simple foot for Master Chief and just having that extra range of motion made a huge difference. You know, the fun thing I love about this kit bashing is just experimentation, implementation, and at the same time taking risks. And this kit is all about taking risks because I love the franchise of Halo. It has been a part of me for almost 30 years. And I would love to do more Halo related kit bashes down the road, but I think it's time to push forward to the next big kit bash. You know, something that's different, something that people love. And, you know, I would love to do more in the future, but just like Master Chief after completing the mission in Halo 3, it's time for me to take a small break and move on to the next build. <laughs> but with that being said, if you guys like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you dudes and dudettes on the next build.